Hello and welcome to Insights with Thomas Caldwell on September the 15th, 2022. Tom, it was a pretty dramatic day in the markets two days ago on Wednesday. The Dow Jones was down over 1,200 points and the S&P 500 was down about four, well, just over 4%. Yep. So what are your comments? <laughs> well, you're right, it was impressive. Let me go back to what we've said before in these insights, the, the trilogy, inflation, interest rates, the economy. Those are the concerns. The concerns are inflation is not abating, therefore interest rates will be cranked up to a level that will impact the economy, drive us into a recession, whatever. Uh, so the numbers came out, they were expected to be 8.1% annual inflation. They were 8.4, I believe. So fractions of 1%. So now we have the volatility factor, which we've also discussed. Short-term volatility is sometimes contrived, and that's what we tend to miss. The, the, the point is that once you see a small variant like that, you could even say it, it's a little bit of an overreaction, but be that as it may, that's what happened. So the market is very tentative. Short-term volatility is a factor. You, you have actors in here that will, can add to the volatility, both the mechanisms. You can drive a market down. It's a lot easier now than years ago. The story that I like to tell is that many years ago, uh, during the Battle of, of, of Waterloo, uh, basically Wellington won and beat Napoleon. This was very important. It was the major economic factor of the time. But the Rothschilds had passenger pigeons, which they flew from the battle. So they, they knew that Wellington had won. And you thought, oh, well, what they do is buy the market. No, they spread the rumor that Wellington lost. The London market crashed. They scooped the market, and then up it went when the news came out. So my point is, this is as old as time the manipulating, the using of markets. I come down to the basic point, use the volatility. When you have disastrous days like that, you, know, you have to look at what you own and look at what you want to own. So there are opportunities within the volatility. Overall trend, we can talk about that in the next section. So I was just about to ask, macro thoughts uh, on the longer term. Longer term, the Western economies will grow. And as they grow, markets will grow with them. That's the longer term. Short term, there's all kinds of variables. For, for example, um, countries are in competition just as companies are in competition. Canada as a country is losing on that. We, we have not had policies for a long, long time in terms of developing the economy. We, we, uh, we seem to want to uh, basically get fixated on climate change or get fixated on piecing off people that seem aggrieved of something that happened hundreds of years ago. Those are the only two policies we've seen. We have to be bigger, better, and smarter than that, and we're not. Therefore, we are losing the competitive battle with other countries. So to my mind, uh, I believe economies are going to grow. I believe markets will grow along with them. This is longer term. Shorter term, I gotta say, well, Canada's falling behind a bit. I'm gonna skew a little bit more to the United States. And I'm gonna stay within North America. I don't wanna to go to Europe. We don't know how that mess is going to work out with this Ukraine and energy. We don't know how that's gonna be. Stay in North America with a slight skew to the US. And, and that's where my brain is at. It was a tough day looking back in that. Major portfolio I responded to, markets were down 4%. We were down 1%. I'm not gonna lose a nanosecond of sleep over 1%. Thank you so much for your insights, Tom. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Bye for now.